Force, Dark Souls, any percent by Catalyst. Take it away. Yo, hello everybody. Good morning, afternoon, or evening, wherever you are. Thank you so much for all the generous donations going to a great cause, and also to the cause of allowing me to get maybe my uh, revenge on this category today. We'll, we'll see. I ran this last summer, and it was, uh, yeah, it didn't really go my way, went over estimate. So I did two things. First, I practiced, and second, I also increased the estimate, okay? So I gave myself a bit more room there. <laughs> but yeah, thank you so much again for all the donations and, and meeting this bonus run on a very short notice. And yeah, this is gonna be Dark Souls Any Percent. We are playing the Prepare to Die Edition. Um, and two things to mention before we begin the run. I start as a Pyromancer, class Pyromancer. That is so that I can get the uh, Pyroflame and a Fireball Pyromancy right at the start of the run, which will allow me to do a huge wrong warp later on. And also additionally, I will start with the Pyro set that you can see on the right side of the screen. And this set is, necessary for a specific glitch also within the run uh, that's going to allow me to do a huge a huge skip later on but we'll get to that and we'll explain um, how exactly it works uh, you know when the time comes but yeah um, the second thing is that i also start with uh, black fire bombs as my gift that is so that i can finish the first boss and the second boss of the run a little bit faster so those are the main ones. And as I said, this is going to be an any percent speed run, meaning that we have no limitations when it comes to what techniques uh, we can use. The main goal is to just reach the credits as, as soon as possible. So let's get this bonus run on the way. I'll be uh, handling my own uh, button here. So let's start the time in three, two, one, go. All right, so first, a uh, small trick that I'll do is I'll immediately be blocking out of that door opening animation. It allows me to start sprinting a little bit sooner. I'll be doing that, um, for example, after this ladder as well, and then also on the door after that. Uh, same thing that I do is I toggle right here when I start sprinting. That has the same effect, just allows me to start sprinting a little bit sooner. Um, you might also notice there's a cursor on the screen that's actually on purpose because I'll be using that for a glitch uh, during a, a menuing section at the Undead Merchant in Undeadburg. But uh, yeah, I'll mention that soon. So this is the first boss, Asylum Demon. It's the classic fire firebomb strat. I'm going to stand in a specific place, chuck several firebombs, see what he does, roll. I got, uh, I got a little bit staggered. It's no problem. We'll trade here. One more firebomb, come on, there we go. Well, that wasn't the smoothest fight, but hey, it's a fight nevertheless. And I'm not dead yet, so that's a, that's a good start. Here's gonna be this hollow. I'm gonna try to get in front of him. Let's see what cycle we get. All right, it seems like I'm getting uh, a cycle where I'll punch him out of the way, just like that. I don't need any of the starting gear because I'll be purchasing things from the Undead Merchant, as I mentioned. And now I'm basically going to be going through the rest of the uh, Undead Asylum here. I'll trigger the boulder. We'll talk to Oscar. It is faster to talk to him because he gives me uh, his items while I'm standing on the edge here. And now I'm going to run up so that I can get the Pyromancy Flame in order to be able to use the Fireball Pyromancy in a bit. I'll make sure to roll here, which will actually alert the hollows behind the corner, because the enemies in this game cannot just, uh, they cannot just hear, sorry, they cannot just see, they can hear as well. And then we uh, jump down, get a stored roll, which is neat. Stored rolls are essentially, um, when you're falling down, interesting, sure, I mean... <laughs> Gravity doesn't work for these guys, I suppose. Um, yeah, when you're falling down, um, you can cancel the fall animation by spamming roll, but sometimes, because of how the game accepts input, sometimes that uh, that roll is not going to go through, and then you just kind of get staggered anyways. All right, so I took quite a bit of damage in the Asylum, so I'll make sure to heal up. And we'll be making our way through the Undead Burg immediately, running to the Undead Merchant. And at the Undead Merchant, there's a bunch of stuff I need to purchase. Uh, some of those things are weapons, some of them uh, are gonna be used for glitching, and very importantly, I'll also be buying the residence key, so I can uh, get the Gold Pine resin here on the way to Taurus Demon. Now, the thing is, I do not have enough souls, the currency on the bottom right at the moment, to purchase all those things, so I'll be using a glitch called Prom Swap, 
Prom swap essentially allows me to transfer uh, the prom for purchasing from one tab, one category of items to another. So I'll be uh, abusing the fact that I can click the left mouse button and uh, confirm with a controller at the same time. That's why I have the cursor on the screen, because I'll be clicking that arrow there um, to switch the category. So I buy arrows, I buy the rapier, I buy the reinforced club, I buy the short bow, and then as you can see, I have the soapstone here, and I uh, click left mouse button and controller at the same time, and I can, for 1,000 souls, I can purchase uh, an item from the other tab, even though I do not have that 1,000 souls. So that was the first uh, major glitch of the run, and I was able to get the residence key that way. It's a, it's a glitch that has a wide variety of uses, because you can abuse it in other menus as well, not just at merchants, but this one is uh, the most important use for uh, this particular category. So, continuing through Undeadburg, open this door, this is where I use the residence key. We're gonna get the gold pine resin. This is basically an item that will allow me to buff my weapon. I'll use it twice. Once to uh, defeat Taurus Demon who's coming up. Also, let's jump over this barrel. And second uh, is going to be on the bridge that's right after Taurus to uh, cut Hellkite's, Hellkite Drake's tail. So here I'm going to equip the Reinforced Club, which I purchased. And I'm going to get to the middle of the bridge here, dodge some arrows, apply the resin. I'm going to prepare a Black Fire Bomb. And the reason I want to use the Black Fire Bomb here is that I can basically keep on doing damage while regenerating my stamina. So here's the Fire Bomb that's going to stagger. I'm going to do two more R1s and one more, and that's Taurus. Okay, that was, that was a little bit cleaner than Asylum, at least. So that's neat. <laughs> So yeah, uh, the stamina bar, you know, that's in the top left, the green bar. Um, you need at least one point of stamina to be able to perform any kind of an action. And so that means if I don't have stamina, I cannot keep on attacking. However, with the Black Firebomb, I can keep on throwing the Firebomb while my stamina is regenerating. And then I can keep on using attack or doing attacks afterwards. Here I baited Hellkite Drake uh, on the bridge and I cut his tail. The reason I want to do that is because the Drake Sword will be used uh, to defeat the Iron Golem, which is a boss that's coming up. But it's going to take a little bit of time. So here I'm going to make my way through Undead Parish to um, the direction of Sun's Fortress. Now, if you play the game casually, you know that to open the Sun's Fortress, you need to ring two Bells of Awakening, one at the Gargoyles, uh, in the church here and another one after Quelak. We'll still be ringing them later because we need to open the Firelink Altar in order to perform the, you know, final glitch of the run, the wrong warp, and get to the final area of the game. However, we'll only do that later because we want to obtain some mid-game equipment, essentially, and come back and defeat the bosses with that equipment. And in order to get to the mid-game part of the game, uh, we are going to perform this Sense Gate skip. So in order to do that, I'm going to bait this hollow on these stairs, I'm going to wait in a specific spot. I'm going to wait for him to attack. Parry that attack, and I'm going to repost. And then you can see that the camera goes kind of haywire. So this is a glitch that didn't go well at all in the summer. So I'm hoping that uh, maybe I upgraded my GPS and I'll be able to navigate a little bit better because it took me about six minutes or something last time. So um, in this state, it might look like I'm out of bounds or something like that. Nothing like that is happening. Instead, um, I simply have a top-down view. But the trick is that while this top-down view is... Uh, uh, what do we level here? I might have forgotten, actually. Uh, well, I need to use the Drake Sword, so I suppose I need one level of dexterity, probably. I will figure it out. That's fine. It's not a big deal. Uh, okay, so that's going pretty well here, at least. So, uh, basically, in this state, nothing loads or deloads anymore. And the, as it so happens, in the place where I activate this death cam, uh, the next area, the start of next area, Sense Fortress is loaded, but the gate that leads to it is actually not loaded. So I just ran through a gate, quit out to reset the game to its normal state, and you can see the gate behind me is closed. However, we are inside, and this is the way to get to mid-game without, um, without having to ring the Bells of Awakening and having to go through some of the bosses that we'll be, uh, we'll be coming back to later. So let's make our way through uh, Sen's Fortress. 
And as I'm doing that, I think this is a great time to uh, read off some donations. Thank you very much. We do have plenty coming in here. We got a $25 donation from Q with no message there, but we have a $50 donation from Ogre498 that says, thanks for an awesome week. We also have a $20 donation from Matt54039 says, much love to this community. And finally, a $140 donation from Dacia Gaming. Coming in saying, hi ESA, with this, my first on-site experience is coming to an end. I had my share of fun, and maybe in the future, I might even participate as a runner. Much love, Dacier. Thank you so much for the generous donations. Keep them coming, we're trying to hit the 100k for Alzheimer's phone then. It's a great cause, and, and yeah, we really, really appreciate everybody watching and, and donating. So as I'm making my way through Sun's Fortress, I... Um, Gonna wait to see what this snake does. I'll have to bait him because I should have been able to actually use. All right, let's just quit out. I should have been able to use the rapier, but I think I might have messed up the level up. We'll see. Um, but yeah, as I'm making my way through, I'll be. Exp I guess I want to explain like one of the most important glitches in the run, which is the Musop glitch, sir. Thank you. Uh, the Musop glitch basically allows me to transfer part of one weapon's move sets to another. And that part is a rolling, running, or a plunging attack. And um, the way it works is basically the only weapon that you can two-hand in your left hand is the bow. And so if I do that... Let's see. Okay, I, I didn't mess up the level up, it's fine. So that's good news at least. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> um, so I performed the glitch there. The only weapon that you can two-hand in your left hand is the bow. So what I do is I get stuck in an animation, there it was the jump roll, and queue up two-handing the bow. However, before the game has the time to execute the action, I swap out the bow for a weapon of choice, which this time is the Drake Sword. Now you can see that I'm two-handing the Drake Sword in my left hand, because it's on the left side in the bottom left of your screen. Uh, what this does is basically it is fetching data for... Uh... The attacks that the bow normally doesn't have, which is the rolling, plunging, and um, running attacks, it's fetching it from the right hand instead, where I have the rapier, which is basically a thrusting weapon that hits twice. You're going to see it now on Iron Golem. You can hear the double tick of damage that I'm that I'm doing here. Yeah, so this is like one of the harder things to do. I'm trying to attack Golem in such a way to stagger him when he's facing perpendicular off the bridge like this. And one more running attack. It's gonna make him stagger, and bye-bye. Uh, so yeah, that is an intended kill. It's 400 damage to stagger him underneath the knee level, and another 200 to make him fall on his butt. And yeah, that's, uh, that's exactly what happened there. So now we are entering the City of Gods, Analondo, and this is basically where, um, you know, the more difficult, or most difficult, fight arguably in the entire run is going to take place, which is Ornstein and Smo. Uh, first though, I'm going to take this bonfire here. The reason for that is that if I died on the way to the cathedral, I would spawn all the way back before Sun's Fortress, so we don't want that happening. And while I rest here, I'm also going to go ahead and level up 18 Endurance and 27 Strength. That's a, that's a level up that I remember. I also have an extra level for some reason, but I guess that's fine. Um... So th the reason I'm leveling these stats is so that I can uh, use the Dragon Tooth. That's why I need the 27 strength. Uh, the Dragon Tooth is going to be the primary weapon of choice from here on out. I'll be picking it up in the uh, in uh, inside of the Anolondo Cathedral. I get on this elevator. I'm going to jump over the railing here. And we're going to navigate through the rafters. And as I'm going to be running through the rafters, this is another perfect time for some donos. Thank you very much. We have a massive $1,000 donation. Woo! Coming from our very own Skenme, who is saying one last donation as we close out ESA Winter 23. It has been amazing to be here. Every single person here is absolutely awesome, and I cannot wait for summer. Skenme, thank you very much for that, mate. And uh, while we're at it here, we also have a $25 donation from Zet. I'm going to do the, uh, the best Scottish accent for this one here. <clears throat> Got a question for you. What's heavier? A kilogram of steel or a kilogram of feathers? 
That's right. It's a kilogram of steel because steel is heavier than feathers. That makes that makes perfect sense to me. <laughs> if you have not seen the Lemmy sketch, you can go watch it online later. He gets very confused because they're both the same. They both weigh a kilogram. Mm, I feel like maybe some of our US viewers might be uh, kind of confused as well because you didn't specify that it's actually 0 0.06 buses of steel. <laughs> <laughs> How many buses do we need to go? <laughs> oh, yes. Brilliant. Uh, all right, so I'm navigating. Thank you so much for the generous donations, by the way. That is, that is insane. So as I'm making my way through here, um, these guys can have a lightning spear attack, which they can throw at me. So I'll look back to make sure that um, if it comes, I can actually dodge it. Same thing here, but there's also silver knights that are shooting arrows. So I'll make sure to dodge those, look back again. OK, batwing demons are kind. But it's not over yet. We need to make it past the last Silver Knight tier that will be in the way. There's also a dude shooting from the left side. I tap my circle in such a way that there's no arrow coming from behind. And this guy will attack me. And he's gone. So that is, uh, that is a surefire way of getting around that fellow. And here, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to get this bonfire almost at grace. Um, also, let's hope that I don't forget any bosses this run. That will be that will be neat. And the reason I get this bonfire is not just because, well, I want it for safety, because um, if I die to ONS, I would again spawn all the way at the start of Analondo. But primarily, um, I need it to come back in a second, because I'll be running down here to get the get the dark sign. So, uh, so dark sign, to dark sign after I get the dragon tooth is what I meant to say. So here's a secret. And we'll go ahead and grab this chest. Open it up. And after getting the dragon tooth, we'll dark sign a back. Dark sign is an item that, you know, allows you to return back to your last bonfire uh, at the cost of all the souls that you have. But I don't think we really needed them. Um, and if we did, it's not going to be a problem anyways, because uh, we'll be able to duplicate souls later on if needed. So approaching ONS, I'll perform the Moose glitch again, this time before the Fog Wall, but on the Dragon Tooth instead. And the strat is basically to try and separate uh, Ornstein and Smo as much as possible. There are three different openers, and depending on which one I get, I'll be either going left or right, so let's see. Okay, I got the dash, so I'll go to the left side, See if I can get Ornstein to dash towards this wall. Roll behind him. And now you notice that with one attack, I'm going to stagger him just like this. This is really good RNG. I'm going to get hit. But that should be... Okay, I, I'm dead. So that was good RNG until it wasn't. Because <laughs> I was trying to get Smo to jump back. Uh, and he kind of didn't do it. So he comboed me with Ornstein instead. Again, not a big deal. We have a bonfire right here. So we can just go ahead and run it back. But the strategy was to uh, try and stagger Ornstein as much as possible without him getting out of that stagger lock. But as you could see, it is not a true stagger. And the reason we can stagger him is because the game, uh, in the Muswap state, the damage and the poise damage uh, that I'm dealing is still coming from the Dragon Tooth, right? And because it is a massive weapon and I hit basically twice back to back, it deals a lot of poise damage as well. Poise damage being essentially damage that um, you're damaging a, a meter that if, if you fill up the meter, the, the enemy is going to get staggered. All right, so we have a dash again. But now the fight's a little bit different without the cutscene. We also have a bunny hopping Ornstein and a shoveling Smo. Let's see if we can get Smo to peace out. He peaced out, but he peaced out with Ornstein as well. Okay, here's another attack. Okay, I walked into that one. This is a little bit of a mess, as you can see. This is what can happen when uh, the initial separation doesn't really work out that well. But this is looking kind of good. Let's strafe this one. Here's the stagger. He's going to shovel. Let's get him stuck on the pillar. Strafe that one. One more attack to Ornstein. Should seal it. I'm going to play it safe because it's better to play it safe. Okay, he's going to jump. And that should kill him. So that's phase one. 
I still have to dodge that attack because obviously as the phase is ending, uh, I can still take damage and die. Wait for him to shovel. And now it's Mo. Unless he jumps away, this should basically be a stagger log, hopefully. So as you can see, I'm doing a running attack back to back. Here's a jump back, which can be a little bit scary, but we chase, stagger again. And it should be one more running attack for the kill. There we go. All right, so that's, um, yeah, pretty much the hardest boss fight done. Uh, unfortunately, it didn't go without a hiccup, but that is fine. And what we're going to do here is we're going to go ahead and shoot Guinevere, or I should say it's Illusion. The reason for that is that it's faster. We need to get the Lord Vessel from her, and it is quicker than actually going through the dialogue. Oh, nay. Uh, I dealt one damage with my arrow. That's not good. But we have Black Fire Bombs, so we can just chug another one like this. Or maybe a little bit further. There we go. Okay. Kobe. <laughs> All right, let's Dark Sign out of here. And now we're going to warp to Farling Shrine, and then to Farling, uh, sorry, Undead Parish. The reason for that is we want to make sure that our last bonfire is actually set in uh, in Farling Shrine while we go to Gargoyles now. Because now the goal is essentially to ring the two Bells of Awakening to open up Farling Altar. And then perform a Bronk Warp glitch to get to the final area of the game and, and kill Gwyn. And yeah, as I'm making my way through Parish, this is again a perfect time to read up some donations, Argic. Thank you very much. We did get a donation here for the German restream from uh, Einfash David. $50. I'm going to attempt to read this in German. I apologize in advance. I know there's some people here looking forward to this, but here we go. <clears throat> Danke für das tolle Event. Alles geht auf Dark Souls. Ich will mehr von Exen hören. Sounded Dutch, but good job. <laughs> Uh, the, the end, I mean. The start was good, though. The start oh, I th was good. I, tr I tried. I tried. No, like, you did well. Uh, we also have one that's aimed at you here, Catalyst. Five dollar anonymous donations just said, Damn, that mouse pointer's driving me crazy. <laughs> and then another five dollar anonymous donation here with no message. And another five dollar donation here with no message as well. Thank you very much, everybody, for those donations. Please do keep them coming in. We are aiming for that milestone of 100k before the end of the event here. And there's only one and a half more runs to go. So here, as I'm approaching, okay, I was actually somehow too fast, but as I'm approaching Gargoyles, I wanted to use the ladder climb up animation there um, as the animation to get stuck in and perform moose swapping, but it didn't actually work out. I was a little bit too fast on the menuing. So now we are fighting Gargoyles, and you can see they're going to be a piece of cake because we are coming back to defeat basically like one of the first few bosses that you should be, uh, that you should be fighting. And we are killing them with a mid-game weapon. So, yeah, thank you, thank you. I I tried really hard there. <laughs> so they stagger really quickly, and they also die really quickly. Okay, now I do some menuing here, and this is basically to pre prepare for the, for the glitch that's coming up, for the big skip that is coming up. So we'll be returning back to Fowling Shrine, and now we need to go to Quaylag, but we do not have the master key to get through the shortcuts in New Londo Ruins, and we also they don't have time to, you know, spend uh, running around and, and being slow. So what we're going to do instead is abuse the fact that essentially Farling Shrine and Quillag's Domain, uh, sorry, Farling Shrine and New Londo Ruins are connected, even though they are vertically separated, they are connected by an elevator, and when you get on an elevator in this game, because it's a moving platform, it will not store your position. So that means I can have my last stored position on top here in Farling Shrine, and at the same time trick the game into thinking that my last area that I visited was New Londo Ruins. Then when I quit out, my character will spawn back on top of this elevator, but because of how the game actually loads, uh, after a quit out, it is going to load New Londo Ruins first, and I'm going to spawn out of bounds midair. So that was the setup for there. I needed to make sure to only touch the floor there for one frame. So it doesn't store my position there. And we will spawn midair like this out of bounds. And when you spawn midair like this, for some reason, the game actually gives you a different splatter animation upon landing that allows you to quit out again and survive the fall. So now we are out of bounds on this small seam. I'm going to aim to a pretty specific place here. Okay, I messed that up. That's fine. 
hopefully. <laughs> I'm, I'm trying to essentially land on this platform uh, to separate the fall damage into two different falls and thus not die. But yeah, I'm gonna have to, uh, I'm gonna have to try and see if I can get a backup here. Okay, never mind. That's not gonna work. So we do that again. It's no problem. Actually, are we just okay? Well, this is perfect time for donations because we can have to wait out the fall timer for the game to kill us because we avoided all the kill boxes. So uh, yeah, take it away, our geek. All right, we got a $50 donation here from Noria Manucci that says, thank you very much for holding your event in my city, Malma. You contribute to IT competence, interest in technology, and community. And thank you very much for your donation there. And we also have a $50 donation here from Kron Burgundy 11 that says, the final day of ESA is always bittersweet. Thanks for a great week and supporting a great cause. Thank you very much. All right, so, to reiterate again, I'm making sure that my position is stored on top of this elevator while um, I touch new Hondo rings for like one frame. And then the game still stores my position on top while loading new Hondo rings first, and that's what allows me to get out of bounds. And in order to like have the position stored very precisely in, in the correct spot to fall on the small seam out of bounds, I need to make sure that uh, I enter the elevator from like a very specific angle and also roll off the elevator here at a very specific end also. So I backstep into the wall and then uh, roll forwards. And then I quit out again. Let's do the quit out here. Once more surviving the fall damage. And here I'm gonna aim to a specific spot and then I'm gonna backstep and back roll, which is what I messed up last time. And hopefully land on this platform. That's, yeah, there we go. See, so now that separated the fall damage. And now I can navigate this basically one pixel wide seam uh, just along the new Londo ruins and try to get to a position from which I can arrow. And arrows are a glitch that I'll explain in, in just a moment. So I cannot really see where I'm going, but this went pretty well. Now I'm gonna equip the hilt and I'm basically this is where the Pyromancer set comes into play. I'm trying to get into a very specific uh, weight low percentage, just above fast roll, but not really into medium roll tier yet. And in this state, the game will allow me to chain rolls midair. Like this, and then survive the fall damage, and now we are in Quillag's domain. So essentially, what I need to do is I need to make sure that the first roll that I do is timed very precisely so that the last one's uh, iframes line up with the uh, with the fall damage and prevent it from occurring. So this is Quelag. She did the jump opener. I hit her in midair as she was flying over me. Let's see what RNG we get. Okay, this is really good because this is a long lava spill, meaning that I can just keep on attacking her from the side. And one more, and Quelag is dead. Nice. All right, so that went well. Now I need to ring the second bell of awakening, like I said, to open up Farling Alta and be able to access um, uh, the bonfire there and place the Lord Vessel and then be able to wrong warp. So from here, I'm going to use the Homeward Bone. I need to make sure to not use the Dark Sign to keep the souls so that I can go to Petrus now, the cleric here in Farling Shrine, and purchase some stuff from him. So what I need to purchase is the Talisman and also the Homeward Miracle. And essentially what I'm going to be able to do is I'm going to be casting Fireball with my Pyromancy Hand. And then on the same frame, I'll be swapping to a different spell, which is going to be the Homeward Miracle, which is basically... Homeward Bone, except in a spell, spell, uh, spell form. But what's going to end up happening is I'm going to cast the Fireball with the effect of Homeward. No. That means I'll have the Fireball animation. So let's get the Homeward here and let's get this overpriced Talisman. And then go to, uh, go to Falling Alta. So I'm going to be able to cast Homeward with the animation of the Fireball. Huh? And what that allows me to do is actually as the animation ends, I will be able to rest at a different bonfire during the warp. And that essentially tricks the game and will allow me to return back to a default position of the previous uh, area that I was in. So we'll go to Undead Parish here. 
Let's uh, let's equip the talisman. Let's equip the pyro hand as well, and we'll see. This is uh, frame perfect. So of course I hit it first try, and then I rest at this bonfire, and we will spawn in the kiln, just like that. My muscle memory is insane. Like I haven't done this in quite a while, basically since last summer, because this bonus run came together at a pretty short notice. But uh, yeah, the fact that you can still hit these things even you know mon after months without practice is, is quite remarkable. Human brain is it's pretty pretty awesome. All right, so let's run through kill now. And uh, to reiterate on the glitch, just one quick last time. I'm able to cast Homeward to return back to my last bonfire, which is the Fowling Alta. And then at the same time, before the warp is actually triggered, I rest at another bonfire. And so the game remembers which area to put me to, which is Fowling Alta. But it doesn't, uh, it loses track of like which coordinates to put me to, right? Which spawn point to use. So it defaults to the first one on its internal list. And it so end up hap ends up happening that the default position for that location for Falling Alta is behind the gates to the kiln. So we end up in the last area of the game. Now we are approaching Gwyn. And unfortunately, Gwyn is quite random. So Gwyn can kill me if he decides to. I'm going to go ahead and quit out here to get rid of the enemies. I'm going to moose swap, and I'm going to open up the fight with rolling his jump attack and start with a rolling attack. And then hopefully I'll be able to loop him uh, with staggers. But he can kind of get out of those staggers and then just one-shot me because obviously we are super low level the entire, the entire run. So let's see. Here's the rolling attack. Okay, that's the first running attack. That's good. Now the first part of my moose swap actually staggers, as you can see. And I'm trying to always go behind him to force him to turn around like this. And keep on chaining the attacks like that. Okay, that should be two more. And one more. And there we go. Alright, let's, uh, let's do the Dark Lord ending. I like that one more. And that is time. Well, I'm, uh, I'm glad that I bumped up the estimates to 35 minutes from 30, so that I stayed under. And uh, yeah, let's enjoy this, this beautiful ending. And thank you everybody once more for all your generous donations and making this bonus run happen. Uh, as I said, it came together at a short notice, but I tried to do my absolute best to make it entertaining for you guys and make it you know short and sweet and yeah dark souls is one of the hardest games you know of all time um it's definitely known for it and being able to finish it in like 20 to 30 minutes is pretty remarkable so i hope you guys enjoyed the run and we've got one more coming up which is obviously the super mario odyssey relay i think everybody's looking forward to that and uh yeah we'll go to a quick intermission thank you very much for having me and uh for always being super kind to all the, you know, Speed Souls people when it comes to running Dark Souls or Elden Ring. We are always welcome here at ESA, so we really appreciate that. And, and we love supporting uh, the great cause. And yeah, that was it uh, for Dark Souls. And we'll be going to the final round very shortly. We will indeed, but before we do, we got a few donations here that we want to get through. We got a $10 anonymous donation with no message, a $5 anonymous donation saying, I hate Alzheimer's so much, greetings from Germany. And then a nice long one here, $5 from Strife the Historian that says, one last donation on its way. It's usually all fun and games, but let's be serious here. Never forget what we do here matters. Research to cure Alzheimer's disease is improving every day and this research always needs funding. This is a privilege to be able to contribute to such a major cause here while playing and watching the games which give us such passion. Love you all, Argic, Catalyst, Caddy, everyone in the audience, the French crew, everyone that came to the event, everyone that donated and everyone who just watched. Stay strong, stay healthy and see you next event. Strife, thank you for that thank amazing you. message. Thank you very much, Strife. I'm looking forward to hopefully seeing you here in the summer. And yeah, I've said this before, like Alzheimer's is very close to my heart because my grandfather passed away uh, from Alzheimer's. So thank you again, ESA, for organizing this marathon and for supporting such 
uh, such a great cause and allowing me to contribute to it, even though, you know, I just try to go fast, make it entertaining. Um, and the main star of the show is the audience and the people donating. So thank you again, everybody, and we'll see you shortly. Forever humble. Thank you very much, Catalyst. It is time to get set up for the ESA finale. Let's get hype, everybody. Let's get everybody in here. We'll be right back after this.